In four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Let's sing. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. No, there's no picture on me yet. Uh, there's a reason why there's no picture on me yet. Well, I mean, I could show you a picture of me. It would be very simple. I just go, hi, see, there's me. But let's go back to the graphic because uh, the first. Uh, 25 minutes of this show is pre-recorded with an old friend of ours in California who doesn't have video, so we do him anyway because he is so damn good. Uh, and uh, and then uh, we will start with our picture and our citizens panel and the whole thing. And a lot of you people who are watching for the first time will get to see what this show is really all about. About 25 minutes from right now, after our interview with an old dear friend. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our favorite people in the whole goddamn fucking shit-stained <laughs> world is Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi, Larry. <laughs> now I like that intro. You like that? That was good. Yeah, well, I can I can do it. It's the internet, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. No FCC on our backs anymore. And if our president can use the word shithole, I suppose I can say anything I want. Of course. Inclu including calling him a shithole. So. <laughs> do you ever, do you, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, Larry Bowles Brown, in case you're not familiar, uh, is a very fine stand up comedian uh, who has a rather dour way of presenting himself. And, um, but do you, uh, but you, you've never been political in your act, right? No, not at all. I think unless you're going to go the full political act you're gonna even in california if you would say something against trump you're probably gonna lose a core to the audience so yeah yeah but of course you can like a guy like will durst for instance because he does get a loyal following of people who are anti-trump but but yeah but, and he's doing very very well right now so. but you're you, what you're saying is you can't pepper your your comedy with politics without committing to it fully and, yeah, exactly. And, and that is not yeah. the nature of your act. No, I, I really. People make fun of politics. I make fun of myself. So. Yeah. So, uh, so you, 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 do you ever feel though that sometimes the news is just so dour and so fucked, and this president is just pissing you off so much you've got to say something about it? Uh, I just think the world was horrible forever so no, there's nothing new here i from see me. okay in other words uh you, you you pretty well wonder what the fuck you're here for in the first place yeah i think we talked about uh, i remember years ago when marlon brando died uh, he uh, right before he died he said someday you'll be on your deathbed and you'll look over back over your life and you go what the fuck was that all about and i thought i thought that was a brilliant uh, statement then i asked you you go yeah that was profound no, no what he actually said was what the fuck was that all about that was one of his last words yeah exactly uh, that wasn't a deathbed okay but that was brilliant right i think i would i would have a tendency to say the same thing what the fuck was that all about? Yeah, it was totally what did I spend? Pointless. What have I so far spent seventy-eight years doing? <laughs> you know, I've been in this uh, in this constant tap dance. You know, um, uh, trying to just—I guess you spend most of your life trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. You know, how do you pay the next bill? How do you send the kids to college? Uh, any one of those those things. So, you know. Um, so life, I guess what we're saying is life is highly overrated. What, we're, what I'm saying here is to all the people who are listening and who perhaps even care is that this will be a depressing discussion. So you may as well go <laughs> elsewhere. Always. Well, we can lighten it up a bit. I wanted to tell you, uh, this Saturday I'm doing a, a show with a bunch of old friends. It's my 37th anniversary of stand-up. The 37th anniversary of stand-up. We mentioned this last time, but you were coming up on that. Yeah, March 3rd, 81. Mm -hmm. So 
I got uh, so so. Louis what are Steve they Mercer doing? The Throckmorton gave me a night, so I got uh, some of your old buddies, Steve Pearl. Yeah, going to be on the show. Uh, the Durst. Uh, wow, all the people old... that do the show here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Durst, and who else? Uh, there's about who uh, Meehan, uh, the Steel. Uh, who else? I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get Dana, but I don't think he's going to show up. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this is only your 37th. This is not like one of those anniversaries that you're just suddenly saying, hey, it's been 37 years, but you should have really done one at 35. Yeah, or, or, or 40. I, and uh, people said, or 40, but I don't think I'm going to live that long, so I thought I better get it in now. How long have I been in radio? I am 78 years old, and I started in radio at 14. So how many years would that be? Uh, that'd be 60, what, yeah, 78, it's 14, 60, see, my math is bad. I thought 60, you were really good at math. 78, 64 years. Well, a ten, well 10 from, from 78 would be 68, 64 years. I've been yeah. in radio 64 years. Your, uh, your radio career almost qualifies for Medicare. You, you know, you're absolutely you know right. You're one year away. <laughs> one year away, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. But I, I have a friend who's uh, 87, and I'm, of course, I'm looking forward to 87. That's only he's only nine years older than I am. All right. So let's say I live that long. I don't know if I want to be. You know, I, I'm afraid of dying, but I'm really kind of at this point afraid of living. Yeah, if you're going to be in pain. And you know, I've got little aches and pains. The feet are numb. The, this is that, and that's this. And, you know, before you're through, you go, what the fuck? What the fuck was this all about? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is that all there is? Is a song it says. Uh, but Did we miss out by not having children? I don't think so. But. I, I don't think so. I th at one point, I began to think so. This is when I was in my late 40s. Uh, I started wondering if maybe I shouldn't just have a kid for the sake of having a kid. I mean, I was in San Francisco. I was making good money. I could afford a kid. Uh, and But then I had to find somebody to have it with. And I need to have a woman who I knew would never use the kid against me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, because so many times people use a child as a weapon against the other person. And I think the reason I never had any kids, or I had one, but uh, I'm, it was given up for adoption. This was when I was a teenager. Um, but I've never had any real kids that I can, well, that I can put my name on. Uh, and I wonder, you know, um, uh, would that have been a good decision? I don't think I would have had the career I had if I had kids because I wouldn't have been able to make the independent decisions to say fuck you to certain people and to go looking for a job somewhere else and whatever because you've got this responsibility at home with these kids and the family that you want to support. So not having that as a yoke over my head, I think I was able to do, get, do better in this business than I would have done had I been strapped with a, with a family. Does that sound? Yeah, and you definitely saved money. Certainly, you wouldn't have had the career you had if you had a family. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have risen to the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a comedian, Ronnie Shell, who used to refer to himself as America's slowest rising young comedian. Uh, he was very funny. He was very funny. He was on the boiled up on uh, Gomer Pyle. Gomer show. Pyle. Yeah, uh, he was a San Francisco comic. Um, yeah. But, so what happened to the uh, the adopted kid? There's no way you could find out where he no, wound up? No, I, I never was able to find out. Um, in those days when they adopted kids, uh, or kids were put up for adoption, they it literally they went into a, 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 a deep hole, so to speak. I mean, the, the, there was no way you could go back and find out. You know, there's no record of so-and-so adopted so-and-so on such-and-such -such a date and blah, 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 and he was the son of blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, it, 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 
it was just they adopted, and that was it, and there was no way to go back and find out. I don't even know if there's a way that the kid could have found out who his father was. Uh, I think today you can. Today there are. Yeah, I think they changed. They changed yeah, that because yeah. there was a big movement, and people wanted to find out. Well, where you know, I what happened was I was uh, nineteen, and she was seventeen. Yeah, she was seventeen, and um, I I wanted to adopt the child. I said, if you're going to give it up for adoption, I want it. And today I could probably have a pretty good case and and get to raise the kid, right? But in those days, forget it. I had no rights at all. I, I you know, just go home and cry in your beer. Cause you, yeah, but I tried to adopt the kid and uh, to no avail. And the kid was, when she had the kid, the kid was given up at birth. And um, who knows? You know, I'm, I'm figuring the kid was Howard Stern. I just uh, believe that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, so I, I, you know, at one point when I was in, uh, doing uh, the show in San Francisco, I was thinking about hiring a detective to go find the kid. And then I had second thoughts because I thought, look, you know, here I come. All of a sudden there's a knock on your door. You didn't know you were adopted, let's say, because I don't know what the parent told you or didn't tell you, right? But there's a knock on the door and it's a detective and he says, uh, I'm representing your father. Well, you know, that could be a real shock to somebody. So, you know, the fact that I knew that I had had a kid was one thing, but the fact that I was his father is something he never knew, and it's his job to find me. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, that it would be wrong of me to go find him, nothing wrong with him trying to find me. So I've sat around waiting, but I never heard from anybody. And I did, I did talk to the mother. I was talking with them, writing the mother for a while uh, in later years. And I kept dropping hints, like, because I wanted to find out about the situation. And, you know, she was always kind of acting like nothing ever happened. Nothing like that ever happened between us. And I, in fact, I, I, I wanted to believe this woman who was writing me wasn't really that woman. But then she started mentioning people we knew in high school. And so I knew that it was her. But I kept, when I, in the letters, I kept writing, uh, and she was living in Sacramento, and she had a bad marriage, and, you know, she wasn't doing well financially. And um, I, I kept writing her and saying things like, well, you know, you really, we really had a profound um, uh, effect on each other. And she says, well, I don't know how. You know, I, I, it was always very mysterious to me, you know. So. Uh, it sounds like she wanted to, maybe she had extreme guilt over giving the kid up. And well, I'm thinking that maybe she didn't because she said she had, at that time, a 32-year-old kid, which would have been about right for being my kid within a year or so, okay? And that oh, the, kid was, the kid was a lot of trouble because he, uh, he had a lot of heavy depression. He was a very... De- Pressed kid, and I went. That's probably mine. That had to be you. <laughs> That's probably mine. So I think that maybe she didn't give up the kid, or she, whatever, went back and started raising the kid because this kid she described. She said, "Oh, he's balding," you know. And I went, "Oh my god," you know. <laughs> um, and I often wonder whether that wasn't the kid, and I still do to this day. But you know. Well, if he's in radio now, we know he's yours. Well, no, he he was in something else. He didn't go into show business. So, you know, I think that kind of thing is inherited. If you want my opinion, my, my father was a musician, so I wanted to be in show business. Yeah, you know. But if my father were an accountant, I might have grown up to be an accountant. You know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I, I don't know that there's a natural inclination towards being in show business or being a musician but rather other factors that play into that. So, you know, but I often wonder whether that was the kid, you know, so. But uh, uh, you never, did you ever come close to having any kids? Uh, somebody got knocked up? Uh, and, came close, but that, that was taken care of, so that was it. And, yeah, and that was it. 
That was it. Yeah, yeah I almost I almost had a kid by, uh, do you remember my girlfriend? I called her Schmoody, Kathleen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she got, she, she missed her period, and she came to me and said, I think I might be pregnant. And she was very sheepish about it. And I, I, I often wondered what my reaction would be, especially after having gone through that once before in my life. If somebody came up to me and said, hey, I'm pregnant by you. And I said, well, that's great. And she was very surprised. And I was very surprised at my reaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my reaction was, uh, don't worry, they can take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it wasn't that. I think my thing was I didn't want to go not have a kid. I just didn't want to go out of my way to have one. You know what I'm saying? So as long as one was going to be coming that I didn't, you know, expect to happen, good. You know, fate has dealt me the uh, the cards. So, you know, it's a very strange thing on our part. To come. I, I just saw money going out the window and no sleep. So that's, <laughs> I was in horror. Money going out the window and no sleep. Yes. Yeah. We got to end this soon. Well, girlfriend, my wife, uh, girlfriend, I call her. Girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she, a couple of weeks, uh, on a couple of occasions, said to me, sometimes I feel bad that I never had a kid. You know? So, mm -hmm. you know, we're like two, you know, we found each other and we were two people who never had any kids. And not because we couldn't, but because we just didn't get around to it, you know? Uh, the, the forces weren't aligned perfectly to have a kid by somebody. So, you know, and after that first incident that I had, I think I went on and I didn't trust uh, somebody to get pregnant by me, okay, and have my kid. So because of that lack of trust, that had a lot to do with it too. So, mm -hmm. so, 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 what the hell? Who cares? Well, we don't need to be bringing kids in an overcrowded world well you know we got way too many of them uh yeah. and um uh i i think that you know i i love it when i see the government say oh you're gonna have a kid oh good we'll give you a tax deduction for the kid hey you have two kids you get a tax deduction for each kid hey you got a third kid you get a tax deduction for each kid and i'm thinking no, no, what you do is you give them a tax deduction for the first two kids, and when they have the third, you start fining them. That's a great idea. You know, and when you have the fourth, you find that. In other words, you want to have another kid, you're going to have to take a little off your taxes every year. That You know, you're going to have to pay a little more into your taxes. But the first two kids, those are deductible. And and I, uh, you know, and I, I always get... Don't you don't you get bothered when you hear a president or some politician say, "And we have to protect the families of America." Well, what about protecting me? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I don't we have don't any. Count. Yeah, because I didn't shoot my sperm into somebody's pussy. That I that I suddenly <laughs> am not a valid citizen of this country. We have to make a better life for our families here in America. No, make better life for everybody. And don't encourage and people like us without kids. We have to pay for the schools and yeah. Now in in China, you know, you could only have one kid gratis on the state. If you had a second kid, everybody had this idea that if you went out, you suddenly you, you were going to have a second kid, you had to get an abortion, and that wasn't true. But you did uh, have to pay a penalty, you know, and um, uh, so the rich could afford to have more than one kid. But the poor couldn't, okay? So most of the poor went and got abortions rather than have that second kid. So that was what that was all about. Yeah. It's not like the state said, you have to have an abortion. You know. But there are, there are parts of the world where people, like Japan apparently is not producing enough children to keep the population up, and uh, parts of Europe, and they say white people in America are not reproducing much anymore. Why is that? They've just stopped. I don't know why, but it's a, a definitely a trend. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's but, way down in Europe. Yeah, and yet the the minorities are what are slowly becoming the majorities. But the, the minorities minor becoming they. I think the minorities are becoming the majorities in Europe uh, in the next 
thirty to forty years. Yeah, um, but we're, we're you know we're getting there. You know we have yeah. quite a uh, Latino population, quite a black population in this country. If you take them all together, they may add up to more people than the whites in this country. That's going to happen soon. Yeah, yeah. Also, no more redheads after twenty fifty. No more redheads. Didn't you hear about that? No. Redhead people, redheaded people are getting are are slowly being what can I call it? Bred out of the population. And they say by the year twenty fifty there'll be no more redheads. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You think I'm kidding. That's true. How do you uh, breed someone out? Well, it's just, uh, I don't know, somehow genetically uh, we've mutated so that the gene that supplies people with red hair uh, has been being promulgated less and less and less. It's not like they sat around and genetically decided to breed out redheads, but that the, that the red, redheads will just disappear by 2050, they say. Well, okay. I never heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never like redheads anyway. I don't even know if I know any. You know, because they have freckles, and I don't like freckles either. So. <laughs> they were always a very fair people, you know. I'm, I wonder if that's true. You know, we say that here in America, it, it, it's going to disappear. How about like Ireland, for instance, where you have a lot of redheaded people? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good question. That may be the only place they uh, remain. Uh, it could be. It could well be, um, but uh, you know. So anyway, that's uh, that's, and you know, I don't think you find redheads, for instance, in the Mid East countries. I don't think there are any redheaded people there. No, they're all part most for the most part dark haired. I think some blonde, but certainly I don't think they have red hair in in those countries. So genetically, no, we don't need them, huh? We don't need them, we don't, like you said. <laughs> we don't need them. So again, we get back to the question: Is that all? This is—is is that all there is to this? Is was that? What was that all about? That's what he said, Brando. What was that all yeah. about? Yeah. What was that all about? Yeah. And I—I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to say, you know, I look back and I go, God, all the years I've spent, and the things I did in those years, and so on and so forth, and wow, I've got a lot of memories, but then I drop dead and I don't have them anymore. You know, so what good are memories? You know, so yeah, yeah. Well, I think that that's why religion and everything. I think I think humans want to. They have to believe there's some point to this life, and maybe there's not. But that's why religions pop up and everything. And they refuse to believe that we're like ants on an ant hill. Yeah, and that we're simply doing busy work to keep ourselves going until we drop dead. Mm -hmm. Um, and um. In the meantime, in order to create a work ethic for us, they tell us you must work and you must accomplish, okay? And then, of course, you know, you work your ass off and you have nothing to show for it at the end of the li your life financially. And you go, why did I do that? Well, that's because you were conned yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we get conned a lot in our life, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Conned like crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's weird. It's strange. But, you know, I, uh, so I, I, I wonder, you know, and, and I've had a pretty good career. I can't, I really can't complain. I can complain now because I'm still capable of doing what I do, but nobody wants me to do it because I'm too old to do it. You know? And we live in a, uh, the age of, uh, age discrimination is the one bias it's tolerated well i kept doing this till i was what 73 74 mm -hmm. something like that you know um and uh yeah i did this till i was 73 most people in my business are out of it by that time most of them don't make it past into their 50s in yeah. broadcasting you know only the lucky ones and i was one of the lucky ones in fact i was out of the business for a couple of years and then i got back into it and I was, uh, I was what in my sixties when I got back into it. I was like sixty four, so I was very fortunate to be able to get back into it. 
But yeah, all the age discrimination is the biggest discrimination in this country, and we we really don't, you know, we don't play up to. It. Do you feel you're discriminated against? Of course, because you're a comic. They 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 really want the young comics, right? Yeah, especially uh, not that TV is a big factor anymore, but uh, yeah, they didn't want uh, when they were doing Letterman. They I got on, but they said they really didn't like unknown comics over 35 they didn't who said that no. to you uh, eddie brill eddie brill and that that that's what came down from the network yeah really Re- that came down from the network yeah wow that they don't want that little factoid to be known you know i don't know they don't seem to hide it very much they're pretty open about it you go to see you're too old <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, like, oh, well, I can't use you, you're black. If they said that, they'd be sued. Well, everybody says I just shouldn't admit my age. I shouldn't say I'm 78, but somehow I can't lie about my age. I refuse to lie about my age. This is what I am. This is what 78 is. You know? Well, there was just a uh, there was just a court uh, finding the other day about the Internet Movie Database because uh, – some actors sued because they didn't, you know, they have their birth date on there, a lot of them. Yeah. People they, put it on. They didn't want it they on. They sued because they thought it was, they having their birth date on there was keeping them from getting to work, and the court ruled, though, it was a free speech issue, and they could, they could still keep the birth date on there. Wow. Hey, look, we've run out of time. And all, that's, <laughs> yes, in more ways than one. That's what, <laughs> that's what happens when you're having fun. Larry, <laughs> Bubbles. Thanks. Always good to talk to you, my friend. Bye, Bibbles. Bye bye. <laughs> Bibbles. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. And there we go. There we go, folks. Wow, I got a, I got a, there's something tinny about the sound coming out of there today. Yeah. I don't know why. Let me see here. Let me listen to that again. Let me hear another one. There we go. This is GabNet, oh, the sounds- Great American Broadcast Network. Yes. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay. I just thought everything was sounding tinny. But you know what it is? I got some new um, um, earphones for my uh, iPad or for my iPod or for my iPhone or whatever that eye thing is that I have. And... Uh, it sounds so good that these earphones, which are etymotics and really some of the best in the business, because they have this thing, this spongy thing, and you do this, and you kind of curl it like that and put it in your ear, and then it seals around the uh, ear canal and, and gives you really good uh, good sound. But for some reason, that new those new earphones sound so good that I don't even uh, I, I deal with it. I you know I love the way these sound. So anyway. Let me see here. Let me get the uh, Skype lines going. By the way, I've done something a little. I did something a little different tonight. Now, I don't know if it worked at all, and I don't know if we got any any people involved as a result of it. But I I went over and I uh, on uh, my Facebook page started doing a live feed of the audio from the Facebook page. Uh, why did I do that? Because I also had a sign saying, hey, we're doing this thing live over at uh, uh, on video if you just go over to this place. So, uh, so that if people went to my Facebook page looking for the show, uh, and it would also send out a message to them that there was something on there anyway, and they would check it out. So I figured, and I got a lot of people writing me going, where are you now? We don't get you. You're not on Facebook anymore. You're not doing your show on Facebook. Well, we're doing it, but we're doing it on Facebook Live because if you're watching it now on Facebook Live, having watched this thing over at Facebook Live, you can see that the quality is so much better than it was, okay? So anyway, I'm sitting here now just bullshitting with you, waiting for people to call which is uh, very simple. If you want to know how to call this program, for the most part, we use a thing called Skype, okay? Uh, And if you go over to gabnet.net, which is our page, and you won't miss any of the video of the program because it's running over there right now as well, uh, you just uh, uh, go over there and read the right-hand side of the page, and there's a whole tutorial on how to how to get uh, Skype and how to call us using Skype and how to just call us using a regular phone. 
It's all on the right-hand side of that page. It's very simple. It's so simple that it took me two minutes to write it. Okay, that's how simple it is. So it's not a big, complicated process. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we would love to, uh, love to hear from you uh, and have you call the program. Uh, let me see here. Um, where is, is somebody going to call tonight? Uh, let's see here. I heard from uh, Patrick who says he isn't going to be able to call most of this week because he's got a lot of friends coming in. So we're not going to hear from him. Uh, and uh, I, I, I imagine we'll hear from Phil, but uh, he usually starts calling by this time. Scott, I know you're listening out there. Why don't you give us a call? Should I shame him into it? Jeff, give us a call. And also, all you other, I saw that uh, J Johnny Perulis, uh, Perulis, yes, Johnny Perulis called uh, The Exchange. So why don't you call us? Because you've called us before, Johnny. We'd love to have you on again. Um, uh, meanwhile, I think I'm coming down with something. Either that or the, uh, the, uh, uh, the air is changing. But I'm, uh, I'm currently going through all kinds of things, trying to get my, my medicine changed over to somewhere else. Well, wait a minute. I'll talk about that in a little bit here. Let me go get, let me go get Ray Renati. Uh, if Ray were the only guy that called tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it would still be a great show. So, <laughs> so. how are you doing, Ray? I'm doing fine. Yeah. Uh, having wait, trouble that, with my is, can you see me yeah hmm. yeah oh there i am okay here, got it here comes johnny perulis uh hello johnny you there oh i'm in wait a minute. let's see here there we go there's johnny over you're both wearing caps yeah uh, i'm it's wearing with my head headphones <laughs> with my earphones yeah <laughs> well, well, well you've got a full head of hair right you don't wear a cap to like yeah I, I got hair yeah you know i do <laughs> i do this so people i don't frighten little children <laughs> You know, things like yeah that. screw up your white balance <clears throat> how are you doing johnny i am fine uh i missed you i just heard you uh describe some of us that were confused by the uh yeah. facebook announcement and i was one of them and uh yeah. anyways i'm glad to be back here well I'm glad I, I it's, find just, out it's just facebook is so much better because once you've got that page that it's on you can make a tab out of it keep it in your browser and whenever we go on, it just starts on its own. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, it really is a much better system. Plus, the picture quality, if you may notice, folks, is just astounding. Uh, and YouTube. Yeah, and not, YouTube. Not Facebook. Though. No, not on Facebook. Facebook yeah. was pretty yeah. terrible. Pretty terrible. Yeah. I had all kinds of problems with it. So I thought that tonight I would send out a, a video on, uh, on Facebook, which is currently running, saying, come on over here. You know, <laughs> yeah, good idea. Us, you know, yeah. But you know, it's great to hear guy. Bubs, Alex. I just want to say, yeah, I really enjoy. I really enjoy. I, when I love about. talking to Bubs. He, yeah. And we, and the thing is, he's a vehicle for me to talk rather than just sit here and bat my chops for a half hour. You know. Yeah. 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 And he listens and he responds, but he doesn't try to take over the conversation. Yeah. Hello. And he's fun. And he's funny when yeah. he says stuff. <laughs> Hello to Jeff. Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen, is in Connecticut. Hello. Connecticut. And um, Thank you. Um, how was your weekend? Good. Good. The weather was beautiful. Was it? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, did I go was. out? Yeah, I went out on Saturday. We went to see somebody who hasn't been feeling well. So I, I went out then. But otherwise, I haven't gone out. Otherwise, I just, I don't know. I, I can't get myself to leave the house, the apartment, which is kind of like a house. It's large enough to be a house. So, mm. so anyway, ah, boy. So anyway, um, what was I going to say? Um, did anybody, anybody, I, I hate to get into the president this early in the show. But, <laughs> Let's talk about guns. But why not? <laughs> and I'm sure we'll hear from other people tonight. I, I, oh, there's gosh. no reason why we won't hear from uh, Phil, because Phil uh, didn't write me and say he's not going to be able to make it. He usually always writes me. People, people who are regulars have, have a tendency to write me and say, hey, Alex, uh, I'm not going to be on the show tonight. You know, it'll be a, a be a Patrick free night tonight. Uh, and uh, so uh, I, but I didn't get anything from Phil, so I assume he's going to call. Um, anyway, um, I don't want to get into the president uh, so early, 
But uh, there are a couple of things. Number one, uh, there was a documentary they did on the History Channel on Putin, all about him, his, his growing up and how he became president and how he stayed president and then all the people he's murdered. <laughs> <laughs> and you begin to realize what a absolutely dangerous person Vladimir Putin is and that his desire is to undermine the West, okay? Uh, and um, yet our president is giving him blowjobs constantly, you yeah. know? And I don't, you know, he, you, you'll never hear him say, we have to go after Putin. Putin's the most dangerous thing in the world. That you will never hear out of our president because I think they got pictures of him being urinated by Russian hookers. <laughs> <laughs> You mean you mean, you mean him and Putin together? Like <laughs> well, well, you know they do have like secure. Hello, Bob Eberth. Um, Hello. We, we they do have uh, 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 what do you call it? Security cameras in all those hotel rooms in in Moscow, and I'm <laughs> sure there is a video somewhere of of um, our good president being peed on, which oh, it, I'm sure. it's rumored went on when he was over there. And now it looks like Mueller is looking into his Russian connections, his Russian business dealings. Um, there's something real fishy in all of that. But the thing I wanted to say was the other day he made a remark about the shooting, which, you know, was his cause celeb for the week because he thought his ideas were just so superb, like arming teachers, <laughs> you know, um, um, you know, not let not letting a uh, eighteen year old buy an assault rifle. Okay, a twenty. You have to be twenty one to own an assault rifle, which you know you really got to ask the question, and it's an interesting question to ask. What the fuck is that all about? I mean, do you really uh, do you really think rifles are uh, are are uh, a good thing to have? Uh, you know, I mean, are there is there any real need for them? Um, so anyway. He then makes a statement. If I was there, I would have run in, even if I didn't have a <laughs> weapon, and stop it. What, who is this super president we've got here? <laughs> who, who is this? Who is this guy? Trump man. Uh, uh, Trump uh, man. Yeah. Dum -ba -dum. <laughs> I, I, it, it, it was just amazing to me that he's. I, I would run in there, even if I didn't have a weapon. What are you stupid? You know, oh, no, I'm brave and I can make this kind of statement because I never will have to run into a building like that. And by the way, I've got bone spurs. Yes, Bob Ebert. There's a recording Ebert. of him on Howard Stern yes. talking about how an 80-something-year-old man fell and there was blood all over his marble floors and he couldn't handle the blood and he had to get away from it. So I'm sure... He could go charging in and shoot. Oh, yeah, him. yeah, right, right. And then I, he was bragging about how he forgot to call the next day to see if the guy was all right. And he was like, because I didn't really care, you know, I didn't really care. So uh, I hey, didn't call. This, uh, this brings up a really interesting topic because, uh, well, I'm in the trades, I've been in the building trades for uh, 34 years, yeah, and more. And, uh, I was recently at the contractor's licensing board in the state, and so I got together with other long-term contractors like myself, and one of these guys had uh, done the mansion of someone who is in the news almost every day, okay? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll keep the the name confidential because the the point I'm trying to make is not about the personality, it's about the the type of lifestyle <laughs> some of these people live. And this guy wanted the contractor to set giant granite lime st stones without grout joints or something. And the guy was trying to make the case that no, there's a we file we file uh, AIA uh, follow AIA standards and TCNA standards, and it will just crack. It will fall apart. And this guy insisted on you know, this famous celebrity insisted on having it done in a very particular way suited to him. And the contractor said, no, he just wouldn't do it because it will fall apart. So I, I was, you know, I kind of admire 
this uh, celebrity uh, in some ways. And, uh, you know, just to hear that side of him, that he's kind of a screwball and, you know, a very demanding uh, person. Uh, you know, I, I think it, uh, if you really want the truth, go to America's workers and uh, you're going to get it all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, so I don't, I don't know what to think of super president, but I, I, I really <laughs> make, Marvel, Marvel comic character. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, I think, I think in a way there was maybe a rush to judgment with this cop who was outside the school because yeah. to, to listen to his side of the story, he heard the shots. He took a position because he felt, he felt the shots were coming from outside, not inside the school. And so mm -hmm. he took a position, um, which would probably be a natural inclination if he didn't know where the bullets were coming from. And, of course, if, if bullets were firing somewhere, you could very easily think it was outside rather than inside. Uh, and then it turns out a lot of other cops showed up and didn't go inside. I heard they were told not to go in because they didn't have body cams on. Somebody ordered them to not go in without the body cams. Yeah. I mean, it was a Which seems ridiculous. Well, it was a clusterfuck. Yeah. There's no question yeah. about that, you know. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I just I just wonder what, what the fuck is going on there. And, and is this guy, is that one cop who was outside being kind of uh, treated badly? You know, probably. Yeah, because, I mean, he's being a scapegoat on this whole thing. You know, he's, he's, yeah. he's part of the woulda, coulda, shoulda squad. You know, people that want to judge him would have to have ex extreme experiences, you know, like be under fire uh, themselves or being shot at or being uh, in a really dangerous situation. We're not, very few of us know what that feels like. Oh. And I think... Uh, you know, if you're going to start judging that guy, you you have to have some experience, you well, know, with extreme events like that. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, Jeff. You know, I spent a little bit of time in, in Broward County. Yeah. Which is where this was. Right. And I, I mean, it must have been 30 years ago or so. And at the time, the area was expanding tremendously. And a lot of people were coming from New York, New Jersey, whatever, up Pennsylvania, and moving there. And obviously, there was a lot of, re you know, retired kind of people. But there were also a lot of young people who came here. Mm -hmm. And they, they were looking for jobs. And one of the jobs that they needed was police. Yeah. And I think a, I, I, I kind of know some cousins and whatever. And I never expected them to be cops, but all of a sudden, they needed a job. They were in Florida, yeah, and they became cops. And now, now it's twenty-five years later, and they got a bunch of kids being shot. And maybe they never had to have that kind of yeah. real training and uh, motivation to do that kind of thing. Well, Phil, uh, and, Phil, Phil, of course, was a uh, was a reserve reserve yeah. policeman. Um, uh, uh, did you Who almost that? arrested me? <laughs> you? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, uh, when I first got on a Greenpeacer. That, that's right. Really? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Was, uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't, that be, on. wouldn't that been wonderful if the person on the panel got arrested by another person on the panel? But. <laughs> Why I never I... did get arrested. Some of my colleagues did. They let me off because I was a media person for Greenpeace. I had a big, you know, TV camera. And, you uh, so I think boat, that's what the boat. Uh, I think it might have been a uh, was Chevron boat or something that they took over. They put a big banner uh, down the side. Uh, that might have been different. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, uh, we didn't do that. We had the Rainbow Warrior was in town. At the time, I'm familiar with the Rainbow Warrior. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it almost hit me in my boat uh, on um, <laughs> July 4th. I was watching the fireworks in the bay, and we were. And my anchor was out, and their and their anchor was out, and all of a sudden, their stern started coming over my way. I thought I was going to get. This is all sounding very pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> way you describe it. No, but what I was going to say, Phil, is we were talking about this cop who now is, is, is he's, he's telling his side of the story. And his oh. side of the story, huh? Yeah, was, Scott, Peter. Scott Peterson. You remember that name immediately because it's uh, yeah. the same name as the guy who <laughs> killed his I wife. Was Scott <laughs> I, I was on that. I was on that case too in the Bay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, god. But anyway, um, See, Peter, we found the baby. You found the you found the baby. But, no, uh, the the baby was found in uh, Richmond uh, on the Richmond Marsh, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to go out and get GPS coordinates for the detectives to testify uh, as to oh, the exact coordinates okay. of where they found it. So you didn't have to go find the baby or anything like that? No, it was, no I, I went out a couple of days later to the spot. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah, Scott well. Peterson's still in, in waiting to be executed, which will never happen in California. He's in San Quentin, yeah. 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 I think um, he's going to appeal again. Is he? Well, it, sure, they yeah. always appeal. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I heard something about. I I live right near there. In fact, um, I don't know about four miles away from San Quentin. Um, and I did hear some news about that. that he was going to appeal, right? Well, well I mean, I, I have a, a guy yeah. I know who is on death row, and if my estimation is right now, I haven't written him in many years now, but I think he's been there almost twenty five years. Wow. So it's not like they're getting around to executing people in California. <laughs> yeah. so you know? Life is tough when cops start using the bad guy's names. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. it's my cop name. <laughs> it's my show business name. No, but anyway, the question about the Scott Peterson, not the one that killed his wife and the kid. Uh, uh, or did he kill his wife, too? Yeah, did he? He killed his wife, the kid, and the, the wife was pregnant. Yeah, the yeah, wife was yeah. pregnant. So it was a. Uh, it was. And the yeah. baby uh, exited the wife's body uh, over time. Oh, I see. In other words, they she, never had the child. It was right. in her. I see. She was very close to her due date, though. It was just a few days away. Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But anyway, we're, we're getting back yeah. to back the Peter other back. Scott <laughs> Peterson. And the training, and I know what you're going to say, so say it. No, what he, <laughs> no, what, no, what he says is that. He actually did what he was told to do is that he heard the shots. He figured they were coming from outside. So he took a position, a defensive position, and waited to see what was happening. That, that, that's his story. That is, that, is, that is what they're trained to do now. Yeah. As of uh, the training, you see, it used to be, yeah. And I was under the impression, because I had never been in a school standoff, yeah. uh, I was under the impression that you formed a perimeter, and yeah. then you waited for SWAT to come, and you made sure that nobody ran out of the perimeter, and then the guys came in with the shields and the special stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, I was wrong. Uh, now, what the na nationally, what they're saying is cops should come in and get in a diamond formation and then work their way down to, towards the shots uh, 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 of the shooter. Well, that's suicide. That, and uh, <laughs> even though that's what they're saying to do, uh, what the real guys do is they do a leapfrog. If you have two guys, you go towards uh, the sound of the fire yeah. uh, of, of the shots, but you one guy gets cover and covers, and then the other guy leaps over to another spot of concealment and cover and covers uh, the, you know, where the line of fire would be, and then the other guy jump, uh, leapfrogs. So that's, that's, that's how they would do it. Now, if there's only one guy, uh, which is what they're saying, it, it makes sense that he took a position of cover and uh, made his way towards the sound of the gunfire. Well, he says, according to him, okay, he says yeah. the sound that as he heard it was out, he thought was outside. And it was, wasn't it? No, no, it was inside. Oh, I thought somebody got shot in the soccer field or something, and that uh, led no, them no, to believe. No, the, the only thing, this is an interesting thing. He did try to shoot, you know, there were students leaving the building, running out of the building. He did try to shoot them by trying to shoot through the windows, but the windows wouldn't break because they're hurricane-proof. So... Oh, so he was inside shooting out towards yeah. tor uh, towards the students. Yeah, yeah but, but 
out to, uh, from the rooms. That's right, because he went in and then he dropped his gun on the second floor on a balcony. Uh, so you're right, the shooter was inside. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, but it, but he was inside. But the, according to Scott Peterson, he thought the shots were coming from outside the school. So he took mm -hmm. a defensive position and then waited till he could figure out exactly where the where the shooting was coming from. Well, they're saying there was over 100 shots fired, and he should have figured it out by then. Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, you and I would both have to sit there and listen to 100 rounds going off inside a school to know whether we would think they could possibly be coming from outside as well. I would think Perfectly. that there would be a confusion in that because um, uh, sometimes sounds don't come, sound like they're where they're really coming from. Uh, that, that's true. Uh, you know, I have. I mean, I'll tell you. I have. I have a thing here, where I have a, a, a you know a, a smoke detector and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the battery yeah, and a <laughs> gas detector, right? And the battery was going low. Right. So one night yeah. I'm sitting here and in this room I'm hearing beep, 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 and I went looking <laughs> all over the room. I was picking things up. I was looking. I was turning machines off to see if it was one of my machines making the sound. Nothing. Beep, beep. Finally, I go out. Oh, hey, it's coming from the bathroom. And I go into the bathroom, and I look all in the bathroom. Finally, it was coming from all the way down the hall. But I couldn't tell where that sound was coming well, from. You know, Peterson's uh, excuse is a reasonable, is a reasonable excuse Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the story is with the other four guys that were uh, that were hunkering down behind. Well, somebody the said, didn't you didn't you say Ray that uh, was it you that said that they uh, they didn't want them to go in because they didn't have their body cams on? Yeah, I heard that too. That they were ordered not to go in because they didn't have body cams on. Uh, I didn't hear anything about that? I, I heard it. I heard it. Somebody say it on some talk show. Yeah. I don't know if it's true. But it, now, wait a minute. Forbin writes and says, student witnesses said it was obvious shooting was inside and Peterson was frozen. It says, do you people read the news? Yes, we do. Yeah. And if, okay. you, if you heard the news the and if you read anymore. the news, you would also know Peterson's story, side of the story. And, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know who you believe in a situation like that because it's a clusterfuck when that starts happening. And I don't think that the I think the memories of a lot of the students are not clear as to what they've saw or didn't see because in the fog of that kind of horrible situation, uh, you don't have time to connoiter where you are or where things are happening or who's doing what to who. Wasn't there a lot of student videos that showed the uh, Peterson uh, immobilized or? Uh, I don't think so. If he was immobilized, that means he wasn't moving towards anything. And he was supposed to move towards the sound, uh, the sounds of uh, of gunfire. And well, I, you know, I mean, you know, okay, I, okay. I, 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 think about think you, about you can, wait a minute, wait a minute, think about yourself in this situation, Phil. Yeah. Uh, you're outside that school, and all of a sudden, there's a gun, there's some gunshots. You don't know where they're coming from. They sound like they're coming from outside the school, but they could sound school. like firecrackers. You, well, anyway, you don't know where, what where what it's happening. Now your your inclination is yes I got to do something about this but I can't go in and start shooting there are kids in that building you know uh, so not I mean necessarily. you don't go in and you start shooting yeah. you go in and you and you see if you can get an eye on the shooter and then right, if you wait, can get a wait, shot we see the fault the, the fault shot. is that the students should have been armed and then yeah. this would have <laughs> never happened yeah uh, you know that's yeah that's, I that love is, I love by the way are, are you ready for this? Uh, here's here's a question I have for all of you. Okay, it's it's a ethical question, uh, and I and I'm probably on the wrong side of this so far as Phil is concerned. But Amazon is it Amazon? Yeah, I think it's Amazon. But uh, Apple TV and YouTube, and I believe Amazon. All carry the NRA channel. Oh, Roku carries the Roku. That, that was it. That's the other one, Roku. Mm -hmm. Carry the, the, um, the, the NRA channel, which is really a hoot to watch because it's people sitting there stalking deer, and then later on it's someone else talking about his Second Amendment rights, and it's a very right-wing channel, which it shouldn't be because I don't think, I don't think this is a right-wing issue. But anyway... Uh, 
I watched this channel and uh, I said to myself, I should write Roku and say, how dare you have this channel on with all that's going on? I'm right Apple TV. And then I thought about it for a second and I said, hey, I've got a channel on Roku. Nobody stopped me from having it. I'm sitting here with my political opinion. Would it be right of me to protest the NRA channel being on Roku, being on Apple TV, when they have the same access to it that I do? That's what I said about the credit card companies uh, cutting. No, that's uh, a different story. That's a whole, whole different question. Well, that was the thing I brought up the other night about why don't the credit card companies say that we're not going to allow, we're not going to give credit cards to gun stores. You know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and it's and that would certainly trade. bring that would certainly slow things down a lot. Isn't that restraint of trade? No. No, All the isn't. rental car it's, companies no, are not going to give No, no it scouts. isn't. You can take the position that, in your opinion, what these people are selling are lethal items, and you don't want your credit cards to be used for the purchase of a lethal item. I think you would have, a bunch of people would have to sue you, and you would probably have to defend yourself, but I think you'd win the case. Because you have the right to do business with, you know, we we have signs in, in restaurants. We have a right to refuse service to anyone, you know. That's been a common p business mainstay for years. What do you think, Ray? Would you? Uh, well, th there are uh, four rental car companies that have uh, discontinued their NRA discounts. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you used to be able to get a discount if you were an NRA member, and they they stopped them today. Yeah. And they all, all I think the four big ones it was uh, Hertz, yeah. National, yeah. Avis. Yeah. And I just want to say about the gun sounds, I don't know if this cop froze or not, but when I used to hunt a lot, uh, and if I got separated from my dad or my grandfather or whatever, I mean, you can, sometimes it's really hard to f figure out where the hell the sound is coming from. I mean, you, you're, you're looking all over for your, 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 your friends, and uh, you might be walking in the wrong direction. Yeah. Because everything echoes all over the place. It's really weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, thinking that... They're being a little, to begin with, this guy was a cop for 33 years. It, not like he wasn't, uh, didn't know what he was doing. It wasn't like he was a random <clears throat> cop they got last week and put a gun on his uh, on his holster and on his belt and, and said, okay, you're now a security guard. This guy was Six a cop years. for 33 years. Six years he worked in that school, knew those kids, watched them grow up, and if he stood and did nothing, that, that was no, but he was, didn't. He, the question is, did he stand and do nothing, or was he didn't he? Not, it could have been he didn't know what to do. Okay, well, I mean, you know, it's very easy for us to sit here or for you to sit there, Phil, and yeah. and and hypothesize about a whole bunch of things, but you don't know what you would do in that situation. You think you do, but I you don't know. Training, you don't. But yeah, but he was probably trained too. But you don't know what you're going to do till it happens. You're gonna you're gonna question the, where the bullets are coming from. You're gonna take a position not to keep yourself safe, but so that you can at least have a chance to shoot whoever is doing the shooting if they come out of the building. Well, keeping yourself safe is important too, because if you get killed, then you can't do your job. Yeah. Uh, so you don't want to just be exactly. cannon fodder exactly. uh, or a sacrifice. So all I'm saying is, you, we can sit here and we can, you know, it's like our president just. I, the thing that started this whole discussion was me being galled by the fact that our president said, if I was there, I would have gone into that building even if I didn't have a gun. This is a guy who got bone spurs and couldn't go to Vietnam, okay? So, I mean, what? well, I can't go into that building and those kids, these bone spurs are killing me today. Well, he, at least he was being honest with uh uh, with himself, you know that you know, and that that's what he wanted to do. No, no, but I mean, it, oh, this whole John Wayne attitude that he was taking was just appalling. The whole thing was ridiculous. I mean, and it's so self-serving. I mean, who? Why did he even have to say it? You know, it's like it's a stupid it's thing just, to say. It is just stupid. Uh, he, he, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did, did Phil <laughs> just say that? Idiot. <laughs> I, I, after the NRA stuff that uh, got pulled with the credit card companies, yeah, I joined the NRA on Sunday. You what? I you... joined the NRA on Sunday. I hadn't been a member since the late 70s. How much does it cost to join? <laughs> I, I took a lifetime membership, which was $1,500, and it's $25 a quarter or $100 a year uh, for 15 years. I figure if I die, they won't get all the money. 
But I I will get the uh, the NRA jacket, which oh pretty oh, cool. oh god, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> this, oh my god. So, so you Bill. really did that? I don't know if he's jacking us or I think he's really jacking us. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I want to see your jacket. <laughs> when you send me jacket, I'll I'll, I'll wear it. <laughs> I don't. Hey, but I'm, I'm glad you. Well, by the way, you know, I, speaking of which, NRA. speaking of which, I heard something yeah. very sad today. Yeah, what's that? They have four kids who go to school now. Bulletproof backpacks. I saw that. They've had it for a while, but it's uh, it's a good thing to advertise right now. <laughs> Hey, that's I, the answer. Know, well, suppose suppose the, the, the suppose, the, suppose the bulletproof the, backpack. That's not going to do anything for you. You right. need a vest. You know, a backpack. It's just going to like wobble around. If hey, someone's yeah. going to shoot you, I in can the just back. See, see the average American you know? home now. Okay, dear, well, do you have your lunch? Yes. Do you have your Kevlar? Yes. <laughs> you, know, hey, I mean. you know, when you're running from yeah. the sound of the gunfire, you mm. usually have your back to the gun. That's yeah. why. Bulletproof backpack <laughs> might be a really good tactical investment. Yeah, I think right. all kids should just wear full body armor. Listen, you I've know? seen some of those like backpacks, Bauer, and I've like seen how many books are in those backpacks. Mm. They're bulletproof already. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. If my teacher had to have a gun mm -hmm. when I was in high school, there's a good chance I could have been shot. Just by <laughs> the way some of those teachers that like me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, if you don't act up in class, you won't get shot. <laughs> well, I, I love, I love. That's what I say. I want to get vision. I love Pierre, uh, Pierre, whatever his name is, uh, the head of the NRA. Um, uh, Lapierre. 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 Wayne LaPierre. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he says, uh, you know, the saying, they, they constantly say, the only thing that will stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. <laughs> but, you know, until that kid went into that school and started shooting, he was a good guy with a gun. You know, he, he was and he wasn't. Did you hear a story uh, that the uh, school what system... Was Schrodinger's was terrorist? No, they were being paid <laughs> not to report crime. That uh, there was a 2000, 2013 Obama... Uh, uh, um, uh, money grants, if you could reduce crime, uh, it had something to do with the sheriff's department and the schools, and if you could reduce crime, uh, they would actually give you a grant. So they, the attitude was, why report these kids, try and handle it internally, and don't get them a record. And, well, uh, that's the case. And, Is that and, Obama's and, fault? No. That's not well, Obama's uh, fault. It, I think the... the, the the idea was noble. It was just that if the people were doing this, they were being felonious about it. Okay. So what happened was uh, there were tons of contacts, especially with this individual, Cruz, that didn't get reported. Now, if those got reported, then he wouldn't have been able to be a good guy with a gun because uh, those crimes would have been reported. Are you familiar with, uh, with that story that uh, came out over the weekend? No, no, I'm not. I'll try and find. Well, I mean, but it, I, let's I let's it. let's say oh, for, you, let's say for a moment it's true. To begin with, it is an Obama's fault. The idea is a noble I, one. I, I said it was an Obama error. Yeah, I know, I know, uh, but but believe me, give Trump enough time, he'll blame it on Obama. Uh, yeah, well, the, but the fact is that it was, I think, an admirable idea. The fact that maybe these people down in Broward County were a little bit felonious about it and said, "Well, let's not report this stuff and deal with it internally, right. so we can get the grants." Uh, right. I don't think anybody second guessed that anybody would be that devious. Okay. Jeff, am I right about uh, that observation? Did you did you hear it? Uh, I heard part of it, but I don't have enough information to give you a definitive answer as to uh, what what it was. You know, they talk about the fog of war, and this is a, a kind of like a, a fog of war. It's everything gets muddled, you know. And uh, but uh, no, I, what I was saying is, is that I, I so am I am I right in saying, hey, I'm not going to complain about the fact that Roku is carrying the NRA channel because they do. They yeah, also well, call, it's, a, it's a free speech uh, issue. They, they also carry the not. they also carry the Gabnet right. channel. You know? Yeah. And, you know, they're very popular. Uh, y y if I might be so bold as suggest that. Uh, the protest actions directed at the NRA are pointless. There's no way the NRA is going to go out of business. 
uh, weapons industry is huge. It's colossal. I, well, and, I've got to tell you, I, wa I watch this channel, and it is yeah. slick. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. is really slick. And they even had some people, one guy, black guy, who did uh, a commentary that was very persuasive. I didn't agree with him. I was almost going to record yeah. it and play it here, um, and I still might uh, because I know I can find it. Uh, but it was all very slick. The graphics are slick. I mean, it it looks almost better than Fox. I mean, it's really well, amazing. Well, yeah, I think, you know, it's easy to protest the NRA, and I think the protest effort is going to be really misplaced. If you really want to go after somebody, you remember that line from Sean Connery in the Untouchables of Kevin Costner? You know, if you really want to go after Capone, well, this is that kind of situation. You go after the goddamn senators and congressmen in, in Washington yeah. who are really stopping meaningful gun co control but reform. But I, 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 I'm... Yeah, I do think, Phil, though, uh, and, and uh, Johnny, I, I, that the desire to not do business with the NRA on the part of companies is a moral decision. And they have the right as a company to make that moral decision. Um, uh, I would never take advertising from the NRA if they even even if they ever offered it. I, I've been on radio stations. Uh, although, wait a minute, I had a policy though. I, there were um, some right wingers who bought time on my show when there were elections going on, <clears throat> and don't you I have to uh, those? huh. If Hey, if you take the left, don't you have to take the right? Well, yeah, you have to take the advertising. But the thing that made me say, hey, I guess it's okay, <clears throat> is that I said that uh, I don't deny somebody the right to advertise as long as their product doesn't hurt anybody or lives doesn't – if it doesn't live up to what they're advertising, I don't want to run it. And I don't want to run it if it hurts somebody. But otherwise, I can't make a moral judgment on the product. Uh, and I think the same is, is, but the same is not true of these companies who basically they have a public to play to and to uh, um, agree or, to, you know, to, to coddle. And I don't think they like the idea that they are giving the NRA discounts, that this is just not right. Uh, now, my idea about the fact that credit card companies should make a policy, say in Amex, we won't, uh, we won't let our cards be used to buy guns. Uh, that's a moral issue. And it's a moral issue I think a company has a right to make. Uh, uh, what, do I think it's right or wrong? Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, personally. But that's, of course, Phil, because of where I stand on this whole issue. Wasn't the wasn't the uh, credit card issue um, like uh, 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 putting uh, your logo on Visa or Mastercard? Like REI does this all the time. I'm a member of REI. I get credit card solicitations. Well, they had a credit. And, no, they had a they had a credit then, card company or a couple of them yeah. that actually had NRA credit cards. You know, my the, store has it, a credit card. Yeah, but it yeah. has to be backed Costco. by Visa or Amex. Yeah, but, or but uh, well, uh, I'm backed by Synchrony Bank. Yeah, and the credit card can only be used at my yeah. store. But well, no, uh, well, this is uh, you know the credit card companies and like they'll go. Uh, I'm sure I don't know if there's a SAG after a credit card, but they could go to SAG after and say, "Do you want a credit card with your name on it?" And you would say, mm -hmm. "Sure," and I could go use it anywhere. Well, they they yeah. were doing business with the NRA this way. It was an NRA credit card, and they've said they're going to stop issuing them. You know. Yeah, you had an Oakland Raiders credit card. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. Hey, Alex. Yes, Ray. J just to go back a little bit, I, I did find the source about they were told not to go in because they didn't have the body cameras. <laughs> it was reported by uh, Laura Ingram on Fox News. She has a source uh, that said they were the deputies were told not to go in at the scene of the shooting. Were told to enter the, not to enter the school unless their body cameras were turned on. And then we found out that the deputies did not have body cameras, so they did not enter the building or engage the shooter. Because yeah. they didn't did have she, body cameras. Did she name her source? She did not. She did well, not name the source. You know, that, are that are we to believe Laura? Well, she's, she's very reliable. She's right? very reliable. I never <laughs> believe a word she says. So. <laughs> After reading that, I think it's probably bullshit. <laughs> uh, she's the least believable person on that channel, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think that I think Fox keeps saying, "Who can we hire that's even more disgusting than the person <laughs> that left?" You know. I can't stand and her. By the way, uh, over at NBC, what's her name? Um, the one who went to NBC from uh, Fox, Megan Megan Kelly. Kelly. Uh, NBC is having having a great deal of buyer's remorse. Uh, her ratings are worse than they were for a year ago for, I can't remember who the woman was, I think Savannah Guthrie and uh, the weatherman, uh, the black weatherman. They, Broker? Yeah, Lost they, they were the host Broker. of the show, and, yeah, they, the guy who was and they had 25% higher ratings than she's getting. And uh, she's supposedly the... the um, the set, they say, is a toxic, um, a toxic uh, situation. They just say she's horrible. She's just a terrible person. And that staffers have been seen to cry on set. Okay. Did she date Matt Lauer? No, no, <laughs> no. Even Matt, Matt Lauer, Lauer even Matt Lauer wouldn't fuck her. That didn't you know? matter. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't Is your show on a, a morning show? Yeah, it's a morning show. Yeah, and they and she's trying to be touchy feely. She's trying to do all and cooking yeah. segments and things like that. And you know, I don't think to begin with, I don't think that's what M what was NBC hiring. Gee, she gets she ratings. We could have her in a sitcom and she would get ratings. No, you know she, what she was doing at Fox got her ratings because she fit in with Fox, and yeah. she played to that audience, and that audience went out of their way to listen to her every night. Um, but the, so they're having great buyer's remorse over there right now. And, uh, chances are she's not going to last. And the latest word is neither is Lester Holt because CB, ABC has taken number one in the news race. Uh, hey, Alex, I, I got a question for you. Um, cause you know, you're really in tune with this, uh, industry. Um, what, uh, what what is the mechanism that uh, cable broadcasters use to get metadata to get uh, feedback on how many people are watching? I mean, do they get some some actual data what from mean, internet the cable? Internet? No, internet. I could see. I could watch the internet and I could look at your stats. Internet. And see I how know. Many uh, internet. I know how many people are listening at any given moment, and it's <clears throat> yeah. de it's depressing. So I don't even pay attention to it. So. Yeah. No, but I mean for uh, cable, cable TV, do, when they say, oh, uh, Walking Dead uh, has uh, 5 million viewers or 4 million viewers, yeah. how, how do they know? I mean, is That's, it... Walking is it is not a cable show. It's a, it's a network show. What? Uh, yeah. Walking uh, Dead? Right. No, it's not. It's oh, wait, wait a minute. It's, it's a well, cable AMC, show. AMC, isn't it? Yeah, it's AMC. a cable show. Therefore... It's a cable oh, show. Oh, how do you know? The same way I used to do it, a people meter. If I was watching, I had a people. Well, well, they they from, take a sampling, is what it is. Yeah. It's not an accurate number. It's a sampling. So it's a yeah. It's a formula. Yeah. Yeah. I used to yeah. have uh, a uh, one of those uh, meters uh, I, I, from, from Nielsen. Nielsen and, ratings. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I had it for two years, and uh, you'd wear it, and if you weren't walking around with it, there was a sensor, and then they would send you an email that uh, you forgot to wear it or something, but. You were supposed to wear it all the time. Every, every station you would listen to, TV right. or radio, sends out a sub-signal uh, saying what station it is. So it, in the old days, you used to write down what you listened to, and you didn't yeah. remember, so you then at the end of the week made up what you listened to. Here, if you change the station for even a second or two, it'll record that because it right. picks up a new signal. Yeah, uh, if you would have uh, put that signal in your show, uh, I could have gotten at least the one uh, the one people meter uh, thing. Yeah, but uh, it, it, the thing is, even though it is quite accurate as to what that person is watching, there's still only a handful of them. So right. it's it's the theory of if you've got a whole barrel of peas that. and you grab uh, ten peas out of the whole barrel at various points and look at them you can tell whether they're how, what what condition they're in oh look uh there's one bad one but there are nine good ones so most of this is okay it, it's it's a sampling yeah and they figure they sample so many people and therefore the percentage of those people that are watching yeah. gives them an indication yeah uh 
And then there's, oh, there's, by the way, they, let me just add one other thing, Jeff, and then I'll go to you. Okay. The, the, they add one other factor now that they didn't add before, and that's the show date plus three days. In case there are people who watched on their DVR, in case there are people oh, who watch reruns, things like that. Yeah. So that the plus three number is the cumulative total of who probably watched that show during its run. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeff. Well, I think the other part of, uh, of uh, the problem that is never very good on these statistics is a lot of people turn on their TV and then they go and take a shower and then they're talking <laughs> on the phone to somebody else. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just turn the TV on. And whatever there is is on. Well, there was the old story about uh, somebody who left the house and the dog kept watching TV. You know, yeah, and that's and right. and the, so that because there was a dog in the house, it sensed that there was somebody there. I and, actually put the people meter on the dog, <laughs> 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 and I left the TV on. Hey, uh, I, it it was called the Promise Program, and it was uh, set up by Eric Holder. And, and Obama, mm -hmm. and uh, it came out in an interview with Jake Tapper. Yeah. Uh, so. I, you know, I don't see that that's necessarily a bad thing that they did. I think that they, they, they probably hoped that people would be more honest than that, you know? That the well, idea. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, the end result was crimes didn't get reported that would have exposed this kid. Yeah, but on the other hand... These are supposedly police, and they're supposed to be honest. Well, and, and it wasn't just the police. It was the school not reporting it to the police. Yeah, boy. So the police didn't get their hands on it. The school had the uh, ability to decide whether to uh, handle it within the school yeah. or uh, report it to the police. Well, you know, I, I've kept saying, we've been talking about this guy for almost for two weeks now that all of this is what it could have should have you know the fact was 17 people got killed and that's the fact okay and what uh, you, huh what about <laughs> no what, what i'm saying is it's all what it could have should have you know it's like oh well where could we have gone right well y you didn't <laughs> so what they study they study the past to figure out what needs to be done in the future yeah, and somehow we never learn from it, do we? No, we never uh, do. Never do. Yes, Ray. Yeah, and not to be a stick in the mud, but uh, all of these gun shootings are just a small subset of the entire uh, uh, casualties that we suffer in the United States from gun violence and accidental shootings and suicide. I mean, there's just so many of them as mm -hmm. compared to these school shootings. Well, you know, and we, we don't even talk about that. There's an astounding amount of deaths as a result of guns, many of them accidental, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but there are enough that it is, I would see something, say that was something the CDC would have to refer to as a disease. Yeah. You know, and, and you go to, uh, you go to, you know, p people say, well, you know, it's a what are you going to do about it? Well, Australia didn't say that. They did something about it. And mm -hmm. in the, I think that the incident happened in 1996, where the school, where the, I think there were like 35 it kids Saint killed in a school. Something school, Saint. Uh, yeah. I, um, and and the conservative prime minister of Australia helped pass stringent, stringent laws. Uh, it's getting past Bob's bedtime. Uh, uh, it was it was a. Uh, uh, um, you know, he so he got a law passed, and I mean, uh, you're still allowed to own. You can't own, r r you know, yeah. things like yeah. a, 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 a. You can have shotguns and things, huh? I think you can have shotguns. Well, yes, but you, but you have to. There's a 30 day waiting period to get one. They you cannot buy an AK-47. The assault weapons are not sold to anybody. I, I heard yeah. a good argument on uh, AK. -47. And by the way, in all that time, they've had zero <laughs> school shootings. Zero. Yeah. Um, well, they didn't have that many to begin with. Uh, I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Yes, Bob. The g gentleman up in the upper left corner, at least on my screen, yeah. was saying, you know, uh, there's a lot more deaths uh, 
that go under the radar uh, because the school shootings take all the press, but uh, toddlers have killed more people in the United States than terrorists. Oh, God. Because yeah, it, 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 they pick up loaded guns. They pick up loaded guns, yeah. 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 And yeah. I know I know what you... Uh, uh, yes, Jeff? Well, I, I do know a couple of police besides Phil. Yeah. One of them it happens to be a woman. Yeah. And she's a very good cop, and she does training, and, and she's been there a long time. And she got shot by her own gun in the office by accident. Mm-hmm. Where the a lot gun... of guys, when they go to the bathroom and they drop their pants to sit in the toilet and uh, the gun belt drops because it's attached to the pants with these keepers. Uh, I don't know. What happened was apparently, <laughs> uh, from what I understand, the, the gun went on totally by accident and the other part is they happen to be in the, the police office and it was all videoed yeah by their own policy and she was able to validate that she's not a moron and that it was a total accident mm. of course her uh, she's still okay now but it took her I don't know six months to recover being shot or a leg. There's, There's a video on YouTube where a, a, a cop is talking to kids about gun safety. And um, as he's talking yes. in front of the classroom, he shoots himself in the leg. And then he tries to remain all calm. He says, and you see, this is an example of what happens when you when you carry a Glock pistol and don't know how to set the safety. And he's like bleeding out, you know. And then, and then he's like, excuse me, I think we need to end this now. <laughs> hey, the class is over. I was talking to a guy Sunday, a uh, cop, and I said, uh, you know, some people say that uh, uh, AR-15s uh, and that military-style weapons shouldn't be uh, given uh, out uh, available to the public mm-hmm. and you know uh, the argument is is that when they wrote the second amendment they had muskets and mm-hmm. so he said well the military had muskets and so the populace had muskets at that time and you wanted to be able to meet the uh the uh, same amount of firepower that the military had. So now that the military has M16s and M4s, there's a civilian version, which is the AR-15 semi-automatic, that looks like the military version. And and that's why, uh, you know, people want it, because it equals or comes close to equaling what the military has. So, you know, it made sense. You know, that, uh, no, it made sense tanks, to you, then, Phil. Uh, it does not make sense. We need, we need to tanks and drones and, you know, something like that. To fight, fight, got fighter drones. jets. We got drones. I, I worked on B-52s. I don't B-52. think you were know I, I think I might have mentioned I didn't have the it's money. Bomb. I didn't have the money or the, or the place to put it, but when the USSR fell, uh, they made available uh, diesel submarines that I could have bought for fifty thousand dollars. Damn! <laughs> and, oh, and, you know, uh, you blew it. Yeah, I blew it. Yeah, I probably should have gotten one, but all the gauges were in Russian. So what? You know, what was I going to do? Would you take it to school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, especially in these flooded waters that uh, they have in the Midwest right now. <laughs> But, uh, hey, you know how I, you know how I said last week I could just go down and buy um, a gun without. Uh, yeah, what they do is is they change, the, like they change the pistol grip and they put another grip on there and then they take the, the regular safety off and they put a different safety and then it becomes not one of the guns that they have to have right. a holding period on. So it's just a modified version that will do the same damage. They just get around the law. Yeah. Put something called a button safety or a yeah, uh, it, it's one you can just use with your thumb on the same side as the trigger. Right. right. And then they change it. They take the pistol grip off and they just put a straight grip on. Right. And then and then they can just sell it right there to you. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'm not sure if they make you wait some period. Oh, of ten, time. Days? Yeah. ten days. Yeah. 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 Ten days. 
Yeah, I just think that maybe, you know, I mean, we should look very strongly at what Australia did. You know, I mean, obviously, whatever they did worked. Well, the reason I joined the NRA is that I don't want to. I don't want to lose that right. But and but, uh, you, you, and, Phil, I, Phil, I, and Phil. I didn't like what was going on, so it was worth twenty five dollars a quarter to me for fifteen years uh, to uh, to get the jacket. And uh, oh no, you did it because you knew you could come on the air, say you did it, and piss us off. And you may not have even done it, but still, I don't think you, you did I, it. Huh? I did it. I did it. It looks like he's lying to me. <laughs> I did it on my phone. I did it on my phone. Let's see if the thing is still there. I guess he did do it. Yeah. Shit. Sunday morning. I want to see it. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> and what happens if during that time you decide not to give them the money anymore? Uh, I think that they'll be you, you pretty to, angry and uh, they come out and, and kill you. You with an, AK, an AR-15. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, wow. So, you know, if they start uh, taking away all these types of weapons, uh, they'll just find some new things. Like Elon Musk has now invented a flamethrower. You could buy this, like, flamethrower thing and pull the trigger and it shoots out a flame about 10 feet or something. Yeah. So, you know, we'll oh, just yeah. trade one thing for another. Well, oh, I, those 3D printers. You will just can make your own, just get a 3D printer at home and uh, make your own guns. Well, you just wonder, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Phil, but I just, you know, I just don't understand the whole gun thing. I mean, I just don't understand it. You know, I, why you would so just hold on to that right in, in, as though it was the only right given to us by the Constitution, you know? And I got to tell you, if uh, if Jefferson were to come back, or Hancock, or any of the fi uh, the <laughs> founders of this country who wrote that Constitution came back and saw what had happened to the Second Amendment, they would have said, "If I had known that, I would have never even put that in the Constitution, because it was put in there for a specific purpose, and it was it was a zeitgeist, the tempo of the times. Uh, it was important because what it was making a statement was." Hey, King whoever over in England, mm -hmm. King George, uh, uh, fuck you. We're, we, we're giving ourselves the right to have guns because you tried to take them away and we wouldn't have been able to revolt against you. And that's why it was in there. It was in there because of the times, not because it was something that was going to be needed 300 years in the future. In fact, <laughs> Jefferson said on one occasion that the Constitution should be rewritten every 50 years. Yeah. Uh, I don't oh, know. There you uh, go. Now there we I go. can't find the email. 1,500 fucking the, bucks. Yeah. Real. Oh, my God. Quarterly easy pay, EPL, 60 quarterly payments of $25. 60 quarterly payments. Pay. Uh, you, you're not going to live that long. Well, it's 100 bucks a year. And as comparison to forty dollars a year, but in ten years it might be a hundred dollars a year to join the NRA, because I should I could have joined as a life member years ago, and it was like four or five hundred or three hundred and fifty dollars, and now all of a sudden it's fifteen hundred dollars. So, hey Phil, can yeah. you will it? Are you guys are you guys reading the comments on the chat thing? I'm looking YouTube? at it. So, no. Someone just said, "Does Phil wish to have the right to buy the home Zyklon B kit?" <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, it's what the Nazis used for gas. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 a home I, ticket. One, yeah. I, I'm just <laughs> picturing you and your diesel submarine and your and your and your <laughs> rifle cruising around the bay. That Damn, that would have been cool. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I had a Bayliner Sierra Sunbridge at the time, and I said, you know, why would I want the Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phil, isn't there anything that that exceeds the limit of reasonable stuff that you ought to not have this stuff at home? Yeah, if they would have changed that life membership to 1750 uh, <laughs> You don't know if you would have done it. <laughs> That's your limit. Yeah, done. <laughs> Does Wayne LaPierre come out to your home and give you a blowjob? No, but I get a brushed leather jacket, and I'm wondering whether it's real leather or uh, leatherette. 
Well, we'll have to when wait. When the jacket comes, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, well, I'm sure you will. You'll be wearing <laughs> it on the show. I know you. <laughs> yeah. By the way, how many days have we got till you go to the hospital? Uh, March 19th. March 19th. Uh, we'll say prayers for you, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers, uh, please. No, thoughts just prayers. prayers. We, you're not worth <laughs> yeah, the thoughts, but the thoughts prayers. Thoughts and prayers. The prayers. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah. I, Are you going to get a hat, too, an NRA hat? Uh, no, I chose the oh. jacket and the oh. and the uh, and the uh, the magazine. You had several magazine subscriptions that uh, come with it, and uh, which one I chose um, the uh, handgun one. The handgun magazine. <laughs> not hunting because I'm not into hunting. Uh, and uh, it um, <laughs> you go onto their onto their channel, and each of their things is sponsored by somebody. And it's, oh, uh, cute? and it's always, oh, it's dog. always, it's always a gun company. So I can't sit there watching it going, well, that's sponsored by Winchester. I'm never going to buy one of their guns ever again. Hey, it's <laughs> time for the cute little animal break. Oh, yeah. poodle. Uh, right? Yeah, because it's in keeping with Facebook yeah, mythology. I, I, wish, I, had, I, I, cute little animal I wish I had some music for that. That's Albie. Yeah. Say hi, Albie. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah, I, I wish I had. I wish I, I. don't have. I, I. don't have music here set up uh, to, uh, to to run cute dog music. Now wait a minute. Now Ray's going out to get his dog. I, I wonder how, how how big do you think Ray's dog is? I I think Phil went out to get his dog. There we go. There we go. Here's Phil's dog. <laughs> hey, it looks like my dog. Oh, I got to get my dog now. Oh Phil, God! Dog here, here we go. Okay, like go, dog. go ahead, go ahead. That's that's what the video is all about. Let's do something with it rather than just have a bunch of old altacacas. You know, um, it would take me too long to get my dog. We got five of them. Really? Why don't you just oh. all you got to do is whistle, right? <laughs> they don't answer. Say something, Ella. Come on. Tell them, tell them about your dog. How you got your dog? I found her on the freeway. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Luckiest yeah. thing ever happened to her. Well, here we go. You know something? I think if we if we had uh, Johnny put up his dog, I all think right. they're all the same dog, if you want my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at look at these dog faces, ladies and gentlemen. I know that my my wife, if she's watching this tomorrow, is going, Oh, oh, you oh that one, yours, yours, Ray, is really <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, looks like a, a nice your story. ears ray nice looks story. like a cartoon <clears throat> character yeah it's a sh it's like a big it's like a, a mop or something <laughs> yeah it seems like a heavy mop well she's only like 17 pounds but oh. yeah she's trying to get away <laughs> oh i see and how does oh, she now she's throwing up or something awesome <laughs> uh, oh good uh, nothing like getting some numbers for this show by having a dog barfing on the air <laughs> Okay, okay, he's got a down now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put the dog down before she. Screw up my bike. Ah. Yeah, here, Lucy. Yeah, yeah, mine. Mine got caught in mine also. <laughs> in my string. <laughs> well, I have that same problem, but it's with my penis. So you know. Oh, look at his... oh Bob got his dog. Bob has one of his dogs. Oh, one of the five dogs. Right. Well, at least he looks different than the other dogs. What is happening with Ray's dog? Jeez, he's having a. Yeah. Hey, you know this is a no cat panel. You know, I I wish that I was oh we babysitting the cat. I would well, uh, I would bring the cat on the air and show you the cat. See how the dogs react to the uh, cat. Uh, you know something? It, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's the shame. cone. The cone of shame. Oh really? Yeah, he's he's been scratching the side of his face and bleeding. So uh, you know, you had to wear the cone of shame so he doesn't do that. Now that isn't the first. Is that the first dog you showed us? No, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's the same dog. Oh, you just put the cone on him. Yeah, I put. Yeah, I wanted him to look pretty for TV, but you know, this is what he really is looking like. Well, I bet you. I bet you when he when he when he, five. when he when he barks, it amplifies the sound. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Bob's got five dogs. Well, you just saw two. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, poor it, Albie. I'll, I'll get what you got. You know, you know that means he got twenty legs. <laughs> <laughs> and we're and we're back after that slight pause. 
Yeah. You get a slight pause. Well, when we moved here from Animal Salt break. Lake City, we had six dogs and four cats. Oh, boy. And uh, Storm, gotta, Stormy drove with five dogs in her car, and I drove with four cats and a dog in my uh, car. Really? Uh, looks like you got a doggy door there, and the dog is thinking about going outside, but isn't it cold where you are? <laughs> <laughs> That's the third dog. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so your wait a minute. Your wife's wait name minute. Bob, Bob. Your wife's yeah. name is <laughs> your wife's name is Stormy. Yeah, that's really nice. Well, Stormy. that's not her real name. That's what we call her. Oh, Must I see. Be that Clint Eastwood movie play Stormy for me or uh, Misty. 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 Oh, oh, Misty Stormy. Wrong Shane. again. Everybody. Stormy Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back to Trump, right? Yeah, we're right back to right back to Trump. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, his, uh, his son-in-law no longer is going to have uh, access to secret materials. Uh, they, 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 finally, Kelly said to all, all the people who haven't gotten clearance yet, you cannot have access to any situation where you might be privy to confidential and secret, top secret materials, which means that Jared Kushner is pretty much going to be, I think, out there with the cleaning women. No, uh, he's got secret, but not top secret. He, he's uh, he can't see the most sensitive stuff, but he can still see stuff. Well, what about Ivanka? Can she see? Not Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the daughter. What's Lydia. the daughter? Uh, Ivanka. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ivanka. Yeah, Ivanka. Uh, Ivana oh, is the mother. She, can she see right. stuff? Yeah. Ivanka, uh, she has an office in the White House, but it's for her own personal use. Oh. For all her, I don't know, she whatever she sells. I thought she was an advisor or something. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Gerald Kushner has been demoted, so to speak. Yeah. He just said, if you, if, you, if you don't get the clearance, uh, you haven't gotten the clearance by now, you cannot be privy to any what we would consider confidential or top secret materials. Hey, why yeah, doesn't eventually. Trump why doesn't Trump make this whole experience into a reality TV show? You know, like a Trump Day at the White House. I got news you know, for you. He doesn't cameras. need to. It already is. <laughs> Johnny yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he could bring Ozzy Osbourne in laughing. once in a while. <laughs> so the ratings are very good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ozzy Osbourne, it would, it would like, be the top around. rated show in the world. Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> Trump could make trillions of dollars on this idea. All the Russians would be watching it. The Brits would be watching well, it. The there French are a couple of things that are ha happening. To begin with, J Kushner uh, owns a, a, a office building or uh, maybe an apartment building here in New York City, and it's going <laughs> bankrupt. So, oh, it's supposed to sell. They, they, they're not. The units aren't selling for some reason. Oh, they aren't. Is that the thing that's happening? Yeah. Okay. There's something about the address six six six. Now, <laughs> the the other the, change that the other thing the other thing is that uh, Trump Tower is not doing very good business. A lot of people are moving out. A lot of people are are getting out at a loss because they don't want to be in Trump Tower. It's just too inconvenient for them now. You blame them. I don't blame him at all. So uh, now you have an opportunity. Wait a minute, let let me finish. Win, if you don't win your lawsuit, you may be able to afford Trump Tower well, in a few more have, months. We have these we, <laughs> prices. We have these these two friends and their child, who really don't live here now. They, li they live in, um, um, I believe, they're living in Beijing at the present time, but they come over here every now and then to stay in their apartment in New York. And their apartment in New York is in one of the buildings that says Trump on it. Hmm. Uh, because it's part of Trump City. Remember Trump City? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, she, uh, they, they, the, all the people in the building have signed a petition to get the name Trump taken off the building. And the Trump Corporation <laughs> is fighting it like crazy. But they say they want the name Trump taken off of there because they've bought these apartments and they feel the name Trump on the building is lowering the property values. <laughs> And that they want it taken off. And so they're fighting with uh, the Trump uh, Corporation, uh, who I don't, I, I don't know exactly how that whole thing worked, but it's not like Trump owns all those buildings. It's like 
They paid him for the right to put the name on the building. Hey, forget about impeaching the guy. This is the way you get to him. You take his, you take his name off his buildings. You, you uh, devalue the uh, the worth of them. You know, I mean, that's going to hurt him more than being impeached. I saw this documentary put today. A big T on the White House. I saw this documentary today on on Putin, and a couple of things about Putin I didn't realize. One of the things was. Remember, he took an oligarch and threw him in jail for nine years. You remember that yeah, oligarch right. yeah. they threw in mm -hmm. jail? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he, they said he did that as a lesson to the rest of the what, other 29 <laughs> oligarchs. And yeah. one of them actually came to Putin and said, what do we do to keep out of jail? And the deal <laughs> that, was, that was done was, you give me 50% wow. of everything you make. So Putin is worth now somewhere in the territory of $45 billion. So he's he like may a be mafia the richest done. man in the world. He's Sounds he's, like the Sopranos. It is. It's a mafia It is. Done. It's, it's, he's absolutely. Well, he's, he's run, he was with the KGB, and he's really running it like a KGB operation. And, okay, in fairness, in yeah. fairness, you've got to invite Oliver Stone on the show and ask his opinion of that. The guy lived with Putin. He did an excellent documentary. Well, you know, if I, you interviewed, know? I, mean, if I interviewed Putin tomorrow, I'm sure he would be charming as hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. And, and so he, I, could probably, I could probably ask him any question I wanted to, and he would have the same kind of answers he gave Oliver Stone, which were very well crafted. You like Siberia? But I and I also have to get out of the I've country. I've been to Siberia. <laughs> I also have to get out of the country at that point. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, th this guy is 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 gold to 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 Trump. And I mean, what I saw that he did in that country. So what the problem is now, because he's done so many illegal things. I mean, he's gained illegal profits and so on. That they say that. His biggest fear is no longer being, you know, the uh, the president of the, uh, of Russia, because the minute he isn't, there are going to be so many charges leveled against him that he's never going to get out from underneath them, that he has to stay in office till the day he dies, otherwise he's going to be arrested. And, and probably and, he could move and, to the U.S. And that's why he's doing it in any by any means possible why he's killing the press why the press has no freedom over there uh if you are a press person and you speak out against him you get poisoned okay i mean there's no question about it you know and and uh so that's uh that's the kind of world i think trump would like to have here to be honest uh, with you putin's people uh you know these internet trolls they call them uh, they're doing a pretty good job of uh, uh, creating a, a Cold War uh, atmosphere. And, they say uh, they say that the work that they did yeah. uh, during this last election was just a practice session. Yeah, and we're probably going to get hit by the Koreans and the Chinese as well. Did you see what they found out today about about Russia's influence? They actually played with the results in something like nine different states, California being one of them, by dickering and, and, and by hacking the polling machines. Hmm. Yeah, wow. well, California went overwhelming for Hillary, so I don't know how well that worked. Well, they may, they may have hacked it still to make it look yeah, better. Yeah, hey, I'd, I'd go with Glenn Greenwald's take on this with the Russian meddling. Uh, uh, you just got to Google it and listen to it. I, you well, know, I think. What, uh, what's his uh, take on it? You know, these 13 indictments. I mean, what a bunch of crock of shit. I mean, you know, click farm uh, operations. Uh, they they uh, accused one of them staged a three person protest near the White House. I mean, what the fuck is well, that? Well, the thing is, you know? the thing is that you can you can charge these 13 people and I think three corporations in Russia, but they're not here. And they'll yeah. never be able to arrest them. So, you know, uh, they, they did it, I think, to just make themselves feel good. Uh, but uh, they, I think they needed to do that in order to get further down the line to the, the closer object in mind, which is, I think, our president. Yes, Jeff. 
Did you have your hand no. up? Oh, I thought you no. had your hand up, which I think is the president. But I don't talking, know. What? Talking about people disappearing in Russia, uh, two of the members of Pussy Riot just mysteriously disappeared. Really? Yeah. Wow. One of the, one of the women from Pussy Riot was in this, uh, in this documentary. Pussy Riot, in case you don't remember, was a rock group who did music uh, that was anti-Putin basically. And uh, they performed one of them in a church. And that's what they got yeah, arrested in jail for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, now, there was uh, another thing, uh, a little off the point, but on to Trump. Uh, he's come out pro Duarte from the Philippines saying that uh, drug dealers should be killed. Uh, and that uh, was uh, Duarte's stance. And actually, he killed, I think, 2,000 of them uh, he said, you know, you can turn the drugs in, Duarte said. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't, we're, we're going we're gonna to kill you. <laughs> and he did. Well, you know? yeah. Hey, see, that's a good thing. Then we could go after the drug dealers yeah, in but how, uh, how our many, country and start with the fucking uh, CIA. I, 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 <laughs> how many, how, many, how, how many of those drug dealers were guilty, though, or innocent, uh, let's say, were innocent and still got executed? Well, I'm sure plenty of them. Well, but, then uh, I guess it's not the best idea in the world, Phil. Works for me. Hey, oh, it did. It also, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, then, then, then I guess you would like. Then you like Mao Zedong because that's exactly what Mao did to end drugs in China. Now, now in Singapore, they uh, they did a pretty good job of ending drugs and gum chewing, and, uh, and and a few other things. You know, you're not allowed to chew gum in Singapore. That's Singapore correct. is, a, is yeah. a dictatorship. Yeah. You know, in Egypt, they just threw uh, one of the American Idol judges in jail because she said that the Nile was too dirty to drink out of. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what, now, was this an American Idol judge on Egyptian <coughs> American Idol? Or no, Egyptian Idol? Egy Egyptian Idol. Egyptian yeah, the, American she Idol. She threw in jail because she made a joke about the Nile River being dirty. <clears throat> and she got well, jailed for that? Yes. Well, well, at least she didn't get the golden ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hesitant to ask what the golden ticket is. Oh, uh, that's when all the judges like the person and they send them off to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the next. You're, you're the going next, to Vegas or whatever. Yeah. Is where they yeah and then oh. they push this button and all these little golden tickets fall from the ceiling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's another show. Oh, that's not idle? That's America's Got Talent. Yeah, America's Got Talent. Oh, oh. Where if they hit the button, then all the stuff comes down, and they just go directly. They get to bypass the quarterfinals and go to the semifinals. Yeah. Yeah. But the president of Egypt is also one of Trump's favorite people. After all, there's no press freedom there. Nothing. Yeah. Well, you know, when the Brotherhood was running uh, Egypt, uh, it was a lot worse. Uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, well, here's the uh, one I don't get. OK, uh, and uh, and that is that my cable system and probably your cable system run RT, which is Russian television. And it so is a propaganda wing of the Soviet Union. They used in fact, they used RT to spread some of the fake news against Hillary and so on during the election. And. Uh, the people who work over there, Larry King does a show there. Tom Hartman, Tom Hartman the big lefty, but I like does DW a show on, on, on RT. What's, ro what's wrong with that? What's yeah, wrong with like that? What's, ro <laughs> what's wrong with that is you're working for an R one woman who was a, an anchor woman at RT. They had the video of her. One day, just looked down and said, ladies and gentlemen, I am leaving my job here at RT because I cannot be a pawn of the Russian government. That was the black anchor woman? No, no, white yep, anchor, black woman. anchor woman. No, it was a white anchor woman. Oh, okay. And said, I cannot be a pawn anymore. The, uh, this place is being run as, a, as an arm of, uh, you know, uh, Soviet propaganda. And uh, uh, she quit right on the air. Uh, but that wasn't enough to make Tom Hartman give up his job or make Larry King give up his job or who was the former governor of the state of uh, Minnesota, uh, the wrestler. Oh, the wrestler? Yeah. Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. He had a show, has a show over there. Uh, these, these are all people working for the Russian government. And then they, they also showed where news that was being dispensed by RT 
and by some of the other news devices that the Russians had to spread fake news were then being reported by people like Alex Jones. A lot of the stuff he was saying was stuff they had put on that he was then uh, reporting as truth. Talking about Alex Jones, apparently he's hilarious. one more uh, violation away from being permanently banned from uh, YouTube. Oh, really? <laughs> because of... Uh, some of the stuff that he's been putting out, false news and stuff. And apparently I saw today someplace he's one violation away from permanent uh, ban. By the way, Scott Boddicker writes that Tom Hartman is not on RT anymore. Well, I'm glad he finally saw the light. You know. Hey, I'll tell you, i got to be honest. I watch RT more than I do Fox. <laughs> you know, come well, on. but you can't... You Talk see, about propaganda, Fox yep. News. I mean, well, oh. of, of, well, of course, I mean, you get propaganda <laughs> either way. But, you know, I, I don't think that... I You know, I wouldn't watch RT and believe anything you see there because it's all going to be slanted. You know, it's going to be very slanted, but not... You know, at least Fox is slanting their news because they think it's to the benefit of the United States. RT's news is slanted to benefit Russia, okay? And I think that's the problem with RT. And again, I, you know, I, I, um, that, that, that's a channel I think we should work at getting off the air because it, it did play into the misinformation that went on during uh, the election. And there were a lot of people, you know, when people see stuff on TV, they don't know what RT was. It doesn't say Russia television. You know, and um, um, in fact, they showed Putin going through the offices in New York City on a tour when he was in the United States. And this woman who runs it, who defends it ferociously, you know. But they say it's an absolute propaganda device uh, from Putin to us. It's a nice gift he gave us. Why? You, you don't think it is that way? Johnny, I respectfully disagree. Why? That it's the fact. It's a fact. <clears throat> well, you, you'd have to give it a look, and look I've, at I've the looked at it. I've, I've uh, looked at it. I've looked at it. But well, Chris Hedges is is on RT. Yeah. So I mean, how can you not curse it? Curse Hedges and say he's a propaganda tool. Well, because he speaks be out more against, uh, you know. Uh, doings uh, 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 in foreign countries than he does in the U.S., although he's a big critic of the U.S. But, I mean, that's uh, a long, uh, you know, hearkening to a long tradition of uh, muckraking American journalism. You know, well, I, I mean, uh, if our democracy is worth anything, it's worth a lot of self-criticism. And I think uh, yeah, but I, if I, we're I, not getting no. that from our major but, but media, the, the, we are getting The problem that from with RT, RT is that it's being run for the benefit of Russia and for Russian po propaganda and disinformation. I, I, well, nah, not all the news. No. I, I think it's a pretty straight up uh, uh, thing. I, you know, I, I think their news is, is pretty good. I even watch DW, <laughs> which is the, uh, the German uh, the German one, uh, you know, it kind of gets you a different take. No, I, it's nice that you get a different take, but on. I found the email finally. Uh, NRA, there, there, there it is. You go. Thank you. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There wow. it is. And, and, it. Yeah, he loves pissing away his money. Well, uh, you know, they didn't ask me what size jacket I wanted. When are you going to uh, let me buy that, uh, uh, buy that uh, Mini Mac from you? Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it, you know. Right. I offered you a price. Does that sound okay? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it, it's it's you know it's uh, this wasn't the four hundred dollar one. This was the thirteen. No, there isn't a four hundred dollar one. The first one starts at eight hundred. <laughs> four ninety nine. No, there's yeah. no four ninety nine mini mac. No. Yeah, not four ninety no, mini mac. No, this, this, no, there this isn't one, a four. I paid close to nine hundred dollars for the mini mac. Oh, that I okay. Have. Well, this yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it will work some. You need one? Well, I'd like uh, just a spare. Yeah, I could use that here. What is yeah. a mini Mac? Uh, a Mac Mini is a uh, is a uh, desktop uh, Macintosh or, or oh. uh, yeah. uh, desktop Mac computer. It doesn't come with a screen, uh, but uh, or, or a keyboard or anything else. But it, it, it well, when you plug it, 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 it when you plug it like when, you, soap. when you plug it okay. into a screen and you put and all that, it's a full fledged Mac. It's really very, yeah. they're very good. They're very good. Uh -oh. Hey, listen, uh, there's the theme. Uh, it's, uh, it's, we're all through. 
we are we've done our duty here tonight and had a very nice conversation all the way around with some very good people uh, uh, Johnny call more we really love having you here you're really good in spite of the fact you watch RT uh, uh, you know Array, always a pleasure to have you here Jeff thanks Alex you're like an old friend now uh, and Bob Ebert dogs. nice of you to call as well what this show went to the dogs. Uh, yes, and Phil yeah, Meyer. Yeah, sure did. Why don't you all wave a big goodbye so everybody can say goodnight to you. Bye, guys. Okay, that's our citizens panel for tonight, and I hope you enjoyed them, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I did. And uh, I hope uh, they enjoyed their stay here, and you can be part of this, the citizens panel. Just go over to gabnet.net, okay? And over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole primer on how you can do it and be part of the citizens panel hope we'll see you here tomorrow night at the same time uh it, it, right after us is the intersection with jack and amy and then we got the connections at uh, one o'clock eastern daylight eastern standard time and then tomorrow night at uh 8 30 is the franchise mt with the uh, mc with the uh, with the uh, our sports show the arena that's followed by damian chaplin he goes on at 9 30 eastern time and then at 10 i'll be here again same time same station in life in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her okay bye <laughs>